Hey guys, welcome back. In this quick tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create realistic dust smoke effects in Photoshop using some basic tools. So let's get started. So today we're gonna to be using uh, one of my composites that I've already made. And as you can see, I've already applied some dust smoke effects to this image. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete those layers now and we're going to start from scratch. So uh, just delete them. And this is the image without the, the dust effects. So as a starting point, I'm actually going to create two layers. Uh, one's going to be called dust front. And then the second one is going to be called dust back. And I'm going to take the dust back layer and put it behind the car layer. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to create dust that's going to be sitting in front of the car and then dust that's going to be behind the car. This will give the, the overall image and the effect depth and it's going to make it more realistic. So now that we have the two layers uh, made up, what we're gonna do next is choose our brush. And you do this by going down to Window and clicking on Brush. In this case scenario, we're gonna be using brush number 45. It's a standard brush in Photoshop, so it should be readily available for everybody to use. The first thing we wanna do is adjust the spacing. I'm gonna bring it up to about 35%. Again, this is all based on personal preference, but uh, I feel like this is a number that works for me. Next thing that what I want to do is go down, go up to Shape Dynamics, check it off, and increase the size jitter all the way to 100%, and the angle jitter up to all the way up to 100%. And as you can see, as I'm adjusting these parameters, you can see down here that the actual brush itself is changing in real time, which is pretty useful. What this does, uh, the jitter itself, is it, it increases the randomness of the size and the angle on every single brush stroke. And why this is important is because we wanna make the dust smoke as realistic and natural as possible. So now that we're done with this, we wanna go down to color dynamics. And in this case, I'm gonna take the foreground and the background jitter to about 50%. And what this does is based on whatever foreground and background color you are, you have chosen for every single brush stroke, it's going to randomly go between those two colors, giving the dust itself a little bit more depth and color. In this case, in, instead of using just one color, it's, it's going to use those two colors uh, and vary between each, every single brush stroke. So in this case scenario, you kind of want to choose something that's, um, very close to whatever element the dust smoke is coming off of. In this case scenario, the dust is, the dust is gonna uh, kind of sit close to the ground, which means it's gonna be coming off the ground. So I'm gonna choose something relatively close by using the, um, the uh, sample tool up here. I'm just gonna click on it. And that's the foreground color. And then for the back, I'm just gonna choose a white. Click back on the brush. Uh, so we're done with the color dynamics. Next thing what we want to do is click on the transfer and up the opacity jitter all the way to up to 100%. And again, what this does is every single brush stroke is going to vary randomly in opacity, giving, that, giving it that more natural uh, look that we're going for. So now that we have our brush brush fully set up, I'm just going to start basically brushing away. Um, but first, before I do that, I'm going to reduce the opacity um, of the brush to about, uh, or of the dust front layer to about 25%. Otherwise, it's going to be too harsh and uh, look very unrealistic. So essentially, just let's just start brushing away and see what happens.
you want to experiment with this obviously because it's very random so you can always revert back if you don't like something just make sure you disperse the dust across the picture so it's not just in one spot unless that's what you're going for Here, try maybe reducing the size a little bit. Now that doesn't really look that good. You know what? I think I'm good for the front. So let's now go to the back layer and maybe let's keep it at 50% opacity for this one and start just painting the back again this will give the um, give the picture more depth and more dimension with having the smoke dust behind the car and in front of the car let's just increase the size to about 500 pixels again let's just start brushing away out see what it looks like with and without so I'm pretty happy with this image at this point so I'm no longer gonna add any more dust uh, and that's pretty much it for this tutorial I hope you guys enjoyed it I hope it will be useful to you in the future when you're making your own composites and um, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, feel free to leave those in the comment section. Until then, guys, see you later.